Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I am a knitter and maker based in Seattle, Washington. Um, and today I'm going to be talking through everything that I worked on in the month of September, some finished objects, some works in progress, um, some new stash additions, and some plans for basically the rest of the year. So that's what we're going to do today. Buckle up and let's get moving. So, it is also unseasonably warm in Seattle today, so I'm feeling a little warm. That's why I'm not wearing any knitwear. We're like in the 70s, which is very odd for, for Seattle in October. But anyway, um, it is a great day for my last kind of summer knit of the season. I did a fair amount of summer knitting this year, um, and this was the last project I had left on the needles. These are my... Lao shorts, which is a pattern from Pasquale Knit Design. Pasquale is a yarn company, um, but I did not knit the, the shorts in their yarn. I used Hobby Rainbow Bamboo, which was gifted, gifted to me to try, um, but I do really like the yarn. It's very drapey, very good summer yarn. I want to say it's like 60-40 bamboo and cotton, or maybe the other way around. Um, Apologies if you hear dog noises. I'm watching a friend's dog and she's just rolling around. She doesn't like when I talk to no one. <laughs> so she'll settle in a minute, but um, these are my shorts. I used just barely over 300 grams of yarn for this. And um, I think I made them size medium. I made them slightly longer in the leg than the pattern called for. So if I think if I hadn't added that inch of yarn in the leg, I might have been able to get away with just 300 grams of yarn. I wouldn't have to, wouldn't have had to break into the fourth skein. Um, but yes, so these are my shorts. Um, they're okay. I'm not like obsessed with them. I don't love the kind of flariness of the leg. There's some decrease. You start at the bottom and go up and kind of decrease as you're going. So there's a lot of volume in the leg which I'm not sold on. I considered not adding those decreases um, and ended up not modifying the pattern really at all besides adding a little bit of length in the leg. And I kind of regret it. I wish I had just done straight legs because they're just really wide and pretty loose. Um, and then I pretty much followed the pattern all the way up. I did make a mistake. Apparently there's only supposed to be, so you do some decreases at the front middle and the back middle of the shorts to as you're like knitting up towards the waist and there's apparently only supposed to be one stitch in between the decreases and I did too I think I just read the pattern wrong um so maybe it would have looked a little bit neater if that column of stitches was smaller but I really don't think it made that big of a difference um the only other thing is that you do some short rows on the back to raise the back and fit your fit your bum a little bit better and they don't have the texture on them. Um, and they're German short rows, but they're done in a way that you, that the short rows get longer every time. So you're resolving your short row each time. So the short row resolves are kind of in the knitting. I think if I were to do this pattern again, or if I were to recommend, if someone was interested in knitting this pattern again, I would do it from the, the short rows from the outside and then get shorter every time. So you'll still have the same effect of this kind of longer in the middle section, but you could continue the texture pattern if you did it that way. Um, and you also would have the short row resolves would be up by the waistband, which I think would just make for a cleaner finish. So I don't love that the texture isn't on this part and you can kind of see the short row resolves a little bit. I think it would be nicer if they had done the short rows the other way around. Um, but that's my hindsight opinion. I thought about like trying to drop down, like ladder down these sections and add the texture in afterwards and it was just going to be too much work. So I left it and it's not very visible when you're wearing them. Um, I did the waistband has elastic in it and the drawstring and overall they're just like a pair of comfy shorts. I probably won't wear them out and about. They're going to end up being more like a pair of lounge shorts for me, just like around the house or like a pajama kind of situation. They do sit up quite high on my waist um, and they have a really long crotch, but it kind of, 
it's not like camel toe, but it looks a little <laughs> camel toe-y just because of the way that the fabric drapes. So they're not the most flattering, which is fine. Like all clothing doesn't have to be flattering. Um, but yeah, they're done. I'm happy to have them done. I don't know that I'll be making more shorts anytime soon, but it was a good like learning experience and I don't know, they're fine. They're kind of silly. They're like almost too drapey, I think. Like they don't, I wish they were just, I don't know. There's something about them that I'm not obsessed with, um, but it's fine. So yeah, that's my shorts. Um, pattern was fine. The pattern wasn't difficult to read or anything. Like the, there was nothing wrong with the pattern itself. There are just some design features that were maybe not my favorite. So maybe just not the wisest pattern choice for me, but I'm glad they're done. They'll be practical to have someday when the weather gets warm again. Um, and yeah, they were like, they didn't actually end up taking that long. It just was like not a very high priority project for me. And I knit a lot of fingering weight garments this summer. I knit three fingering weight summer tops and by the time I was done with all of those like this fingering weight shorts project just wasn't that exciting <laughs> but it's done and I'm happy that they're done and um yeah it is what it is um my next finished object I'm actually gonna leave to the end of the video so sorry that's like kind of out of order of the normal order but it has to do with some personal news I'm gonna share with you so I'll just save it to the end and if you're not interested in that you can um you don't have to stick around for it, but the, so just to know, I do have another finished object that I'll talk about in a little bit, but, um, I do want to talk about, I guess the next thing I'll show you is my Marseille sweater, which is not a finished object. I finished this back in maybe April. Um, but it is part of the fall fix along, which is a knit along that I'm running through September and October and maybe into November if people are still enjoying it. Um, and it's kind of a make along, more like a challenge or opportunity or invitation to help encourage people to take pieces in their wardrobe, whether it's knitting or crochet or sewing or whatever it may be that is finished and functional, but maybe not quite perfect. Um, and just take the time to tweak it and make it better and make it work better for you. Um, so that you can just get use out of your handmade or just your wardrobe and make it more practical and refresh things so that they're ready for this new fall and winter season. So that's the purpose of the fall fix along. I'm more than happy if you would love to join in. There've been some great, I've seen some people sharing great fall fix along examples on Instagram and I love seeing it. And I'm so glad that people are making their wardrobes work for them in a better way. So it's really fun and exciting and I invite you to join. Um, but for me, I needed to fix the sleeves on this sweater. So I'll put a picture of what they looked like when I finished the sweater. This I made, yeah, back in the spring. It's made with Briggs and Little Regal, which is, excuse me, like a DK weight Canadian yarn. It's a lovely woolen spun yarn. Um, but I knit the sleeves too long. So originally they had a significant more amount of, basically I did the four stripes and this is like kind of my own issue for not following the pattern. Is Pattern basically tells you to like knit the fourth stripe get to the right length and then knit the cuff. Um, but I didn't want, I wanted it all to be balanced. So like I had originally knit it with the band of stockinette before the green cuff on both arms. And it was okay before blocking, but after blocking this yarn really relaxed and grew quite a lot. So by the time the sleeves were finished, they were like at my fingertips. The cuff of the sleeve was like at or beyond my fingertips and they were really long. So I had for a while just been rolling the cuffs up, but I intentionally knit the cuffs in a way that like the outside was the outside because the ribbing looks much neater on the outside than it does on the inside. I had knit my cuffs inside out. Basically I worked like a little short row and then knit my ribbing inside out so that the nicer ribbing would be on the outside. Cause sometimes when I'm knitting one by one ribbing, it just looks neater on the inside than the outside. It's gotta be the way that I do my pearls or my knits, but it looks quite neat on this side. And it doesn't look bad on the inside. It's just not as nice. Like the columns of stitches here, we can compare them side by side like this. Do you see? To the trained eye, like this is not as neat as this. And this is what I wanted to show. So rolling up the sleeves is kind of like defeating the purpose of that whole exercise. Um, and I just, it wasn't looking the way that I wanted it to look. So I ended up taking 
doing my sweater surgery method, which if you didn't see my previous video, I kind of posted a tutorial on how I do this. This is not the first and probably won't be the last time I have to do this to a garment. But sweater surgery is basically when instead of unraveling and re-knitting this whole cuff, you pick up stitches on either side of the area you want to change, cut the yarn, unravel, and then end up grafting everything back together. Um, so there is a tutorial on how to do that if you are interested for your full fix along needs. Um, but that's what I ended up doing on these. So I have my stripe and then I picked up the first green row after the stripe and the first green row right before the ribbing and then grafted it together. So there are three, t technically three rows of stockinette in the main color before the ribbing. And honestly, I think it looks really nice and very balanced. I think because the ribbing is just a, like even longer, is a similar length or longer to the stockinette green section, it doesn't look abnormal and it just kind of like flows in and there are four stripes on the body and I just wanted them to line up and I think they do line up in a nice way. So that's what I did here. I will say um, one thing I didn't talk about in that tutorial that I posted is that as I was um, kitchenering this, these back together, after I did like about halfway, I would go through and kind of pull on my stitches to make the tension look right from the beginning. So I would say, if you've seen that video, the tensioning is not quite perfect on the Kitchener stitch, whereas on this, I think it looks a lot better. Like you couldn't, I don't think it's very noticeable. And this is just steamed, by the way, I haven't wet blocked it again. Um, but it's not noticeable that there's any, there's no noticeable tension difference in this section from anywhere else in the sweater. And that's because I kind of intentionally like took my darning needle and just yanked on the legs of the stitches until the tension matched the rest of the fabric. And honestly, I think it looks really nice. It's like a little messy on the inside where I had to weave in my ends and everything, but all in all, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. The fit is much nicer on the sleeves. It just gives it a cleaner finish. And now I love this sweater even more. So that's like the whole purpose of the fall fix along is to take your things that you love and make them so you love them even more. The only thing I think I have left to do on this is add a little bit of elastic in the neck, which I, I don't think is a must, but it might just help it lie a little bit flatter. Um, but I'll leave it for now. So yeah, I'm even so much happier with this than I was before. That's the whole point of this exercise. So I have quite a few more things to fall fix along. <laughs> um, I have a, sle a sweater that needs some more length on the body. I have a slip over that needs some more length in the body. I showed you some other things in my last video that I need to go back and do some tweaks on. So I have a few more things to do, but I've checked one off my list and I'll probably just try and do one or two a month, maybe in perpetuity, just like revisiting an old project, one project a month, just either if it's like gleaning the peeling off or just like taking, setting aside one day a month to make sure to like do some wardrobe upkeep. And if that's fixing length or something, um, then that's part of my routine. So yeah, um, that's where we're at on the fall fix long. And I hope if you, if so this has like sparked an idea in your mind that you'll take the time to make those little tweaks in your wardrobe. So yes, um, that is fall fix along. Um, next we'll move on to whips and you haven't seen this in a while, but I have made a little bit of progress on this little green sock that I've been working on. And I will just say, before we talk about this and the other things that I've worked on so far this year, I've just knit like mm, probably 90% of things that I've knit this year have been green. I'm just like, green is my favorite color. It has been for a long time, but it is very obvious at this point how much I love green. Cause like that sweater is green. The shorts are green. The things I'm going to show you in a minute are green. I've knit another green sweater. Like I've just done a lot of knitting in green this year. I love green and these socks are no exception. <laughs> so I think when I do my end of the year roundup, it's gonna be a lot of green, which is totally fine. Um, so yeah. Um, but anyway, I've been making some progress on this little sock. I don't know what this sock yarn is. I bought it at a thrift store in California um, and it didn't have a label on it, but it's some kind of superwash hand dyed merino. And I'm just making a little sock. I'm kind of following, I'm using the Fiber Tails Home to Be Sock pattern as a guide. Um, mostly just for this, the Flegal heel instructions because I'm not, that's the heel that I'm gonna do on these. I made the Humlebee socks last year and I love the way that they fit. 
Um, so I'm making another pair basically, but so I'm doing the heel increases right now for the flagel heel, but I think I want to do some kind of different motif around the cuff. I haven't decided yet, um, but I'm going to do something different than the Humla B socks on the leg. Um, but anyway, I'm increasing for the like little flagel heel gusset and this is just my on the go project at the moment. So I've made a little bit of progress. Uh, this will end up being the top of the sock. And I do really actually like how the colors are kind of fading in this hand dyed sock yarn. This is my first pair of hand dyed sock yarn socks. Um, and I really like like this. These sections are really pretty and I'm happy with that. I make this is the first one I've been working. I cast these on months ago, um, but it's just nice to have a sock project on the go for travel for like not travel, but for when I'm out and about or on the bus or whatever it may be. So that's that. I've made a little bit of progress on those. And then my other whip you haven't seen yet. So um, yeah, well, this one is also kind of a saga. So if you've been around for a minute, you are probably familiar with this book at this point. This is the Sadness Garn Soft for Women 2202 pattern book. It came out February of last year and it has a lot of beautiful patterns in it. And I've knit a lot of these patterns. So I'll show you all the patterns in the book. Um, I've knit this, I've knit this, I've knit this, I've knit this, um, and now I'm knitting this, which I'll go to a better picture for you. It is called the Gia Zipper Sweater, um, and I have cast on and begun knitting it. So it looks like this. It's not dissimilar to the petite knit zipper sweater. It's a stockinette body. Um, it has twisted rib details and then the collar is double knitting. So I'm intrigued on how that's gonna work. I've read through the instructions and can't say I really understand them, but this is what it looks like. There's some really great projects that people have done on both Ravelry and Instagram and it's really cute. So I'm excited to be working on that and I have cast it on. <laughs> twice now. <laughs> so I was originally planning and am actually knitting it in this yarn, which is um, Cascade 220 Heathers in the color Lake Chelan Heather, which I believe is 2442, maybe 2440, something like that. Um, but the color name is Lake Chelan Heather. This used to be another sweater. I used this sweater, this yarn, two years ago in 2021. No, spring of 2022, I used this yarn to make um, a Sari Nordland sweater. I tested it for her and no, like the pattern is fine. I don't have an issue with it, but I just didn't love the fit on my body. And then I realized later that there was a mistake in the cable pattern. And I just, I wasn't wearing the sweater. I wasn't getting use out of the yarn. And so I decided to use, to unravel that sweater and use the yarn for something else. Cause I do really love this color. Again, it's kind of a greeny blue and it's like very similar to the color of my eyes. So I really like it. Um, and I wanted to use it for something that I was actually gonna wear. So I've, I've been planning to make this zipper sweater with this yarn for a long time. I originally knit a swatch. I would just wanted to make it with just the yarn, um, but this is kind of like a DK, a DK light worsted yarn and the pattern calls for an 18 stitch gauge. So I swatched it, um, and got a 19 stitch gauge and I swatched it on a needle size bigger and got like a 18 and a half ish stitch gauge, but I didn't like how loose the fabric was. So I was like, okay, I'll just do it with the 19 stitch gauge and it'll be a little smaller and it'll be fine. The only other thing is that I have a limited amount of this yarn. Obviously I have 500 grams, which is what I bought when I bought this yarn, like well over a year ago. Um, and I don't know what dye lot it is because I don't have the tags anymore. So I can't realistically get more of it that will perfectly match. And I want to use what I have. So I have a limited amount of yarn. And then the other thing about this sweater is that it has like waist shaping. It has like pretty intense tapering at the waist, um, which gives it a kind of a more retro fit that I'm not sure I love for me. There are some people who have done it that way and it looks really cute on them. But I think for me, I would just prefer straight up and down on the sides. So knowing that means that I'm gonna need a little bit more yardage in the body of my sweater because instead of tapering, it's gonna be straight. So obviously I need fabric for that area. Um, 
So I was gonna do the second size of the sweater, which I think is written to have 119 centimeters of positive ease. With my gauge calculations, it was gonna come out around to the size below at 111 centimeters of positive ease, which is plenty. Like that gives me almost 20 centimeters of positive ease, which is a lot. Um, and I was fine with it. Like I kept, I was trucking along. I have knit almost the whole back panel. Um, you shape it with short, this looks like nothing, but you shape it with short rows to have sloping shoulders and then you knit, I don't know, I think I had knit like two thirds of the length that I needed for the back panel um, in like a week. Like I wasn't in a rush to do this, but I was sitting on the bus on the way to work the other day, just thinking about knitting and knitting projects and the yarn that I have, which is a very normal thing to do, I think for all of us that are here. And I have this mo have this mohair in my stash that I bought two years ago, like June 2021 probably, um, that I bought 200 grams of because I wanted to make an all mohair sweater. And at the time I didn't have a pattern in mind, the yarn was on good sale, so I bought it. Um, but I, and then the store that I bought it for from, the reason the yarn was on sale was because the store was going out of business and it's a, a yarn that is not really available in the US. It's a South African mohair. It's called African Expressions Hope. Um, and it's like a 80% mohair, 20% polyamide yarn. Just like a really pretty affordable mohair second strand. Um, but I didn't realize that really for like a two stranded mohair project, most of the patterns call for 225 to 250 grams of mohair for a size that I would prefer. And so I haven't found a pattern that I could use 200 grams for, and I've kind of been holding onto it for a while, hoping I could make an all mohair sweater, but not really having enough and knowing I would have to kind of compromise on the size and all sorts of things that aren't that important. But um, I realized when I was on the bus the other day that the color of this mohair honestly would work really, really nicely with this main color and would help solve a lot of my gauge problems. Like holding a second strand would get me to 18 stitches and then I would have the ease that I want and like would solve a lot of my issues. But I was worried that it was gonna alter the color too much because I love the color of this yarn. Um, and this is obviously like, this is green. This is leans a little more blue. So I held them next to each other and I was like, mm, they're not that different. I did a swatch, I was like, it's not that different. And I decided to just go for it, to get this yarn out of my stash, to use it something for I know that for something that I knew I would enjoy, to get this yarn out of my stash and make it useful to me. So I've started again. <laughs> this is my take two, and I just wanted to keep the discarded, I guess, piece so that I could show you the color difference um, between the one with the mohair and the one without. Um and you can see that like this is slightly more green and it especially looks more green in this light, but it's not that different. Um, it kind of mutes out some of the heatheredness of this yarn a little bit, but it's still a very pretty color. It definitely leans more green than blue now with the mohair in it. But again, I do like it. Obviously green is my favorite color, so like I don't think I can really have too many green sweaters. Um, so yeah, I've just decided to go for it and I'm happy with my decision. This fabric is really nice. It's a little bit warmer. It's a little more dense, I think, which means I can wear this almost as like more of an outerwear piece here where I live, especially in like the fall and springtime. So yeah, I've cast it on again <laughs> and made some good progress. I'm probably a little, I'm a little less than halfway through the back panel, um, the second time. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep plotting away on that and I'm not in any particular rush to have this done. But yeah, it'll be great. Um, nice and cozy and warm and I think the, the mohair will be okay up on my neck. I'm not sure that I'm gonna make the neck of mine quite as long as it is in the pattern. I've seen some projects where people made the, the like neck section a little bit smaller. Like you can see in this photo, it's pretty, it's pretty long, I might make it half an inch or so shorter than that, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So yeah, since I have limited yarn, my plan is basically to knit the front or knit the back, knit the front, join in the body and the round, and then kind of like go until I run out of whatever skein of yarn I'm working on. And then I'll probably, I'm not sure if I'll do the sleeves next or if I'll pick up for the collar next, but the collar is double knit. So it is gonna require quite a lot of yarn and quite a lot of time. So maybe I'll do the sleeves 
both sleeves to the right length, do the collar, and then just use whatever I have left for the length. I'm undecided, but that's where we're at on that. So yes, that is my current main whip. I have that sock going and that's really all the whips that I have going on right now. I did have another kind of unfortunate incident this month. I had cast on for the Urban Sweater by Kristen Viola Odegaard, which is from the book Scandinavian Sweaters, which I don't think I have handy. Um, but it is a book that was translated into English from Norwegian, I believe, originally. And it has some traditional kind of Norwegian Scandinavian color work motifs in it. It's really pretty. Um, and this pattern is just like a two color color work sweater. And I bought some yarn for it earlier this year when it was on sale. I bought the Cascade Yarns Aereo, excuse me, which is a blown yarn. Um, it's like mostly 47% uh, wool, 31% alpaca, 22% nylon. It's so soft and so squishy. This is the color hazelnut or chestnut. This yarn is discontinued now, so you can't really get it anymore, but it's very similar to Drops Air or Sunnis Garn Kos or any of those other blown yarns. So I bought five skeins of the brown and one skein of a white contrast to make that urban sweater from Kristen Viola Odegaard. And I cast it on, I, first of all, I was thinking, so the pattern is knit bottom up. Um, and I was like, eh, I don't really know that I wanna do it that way. I think I'd rather do it top down. So I started top down and knit about the first motif and realized that I in fact did not wanna do it <laughs> top down because it flips the motif and it made it look a little different. And I'll put some pictures in here for you to see, but like the way, just the, the motifs that are in this pattern looked, it looked a little funny when you flipped them. I thought it was, I was gonna like it better that way, which is why I did it from the top down to begin with. And I was like, actually this looks kind of funny. So then I started it from the bottom up and I started with the sleeve because I figured that would be like another good way for me to, it's like a smaller circumference gauge, whatever. It has a really, so I start the cuff, it has a really, really long ribbing on it. I think five and a half inches of ribbing on the sleeve, which is a lot of ribbing. Um, let me look. It's like, I don't know, what's five and a half inches? 14 centimeters of ribbing. That's a lot of ribbing. Um, in like a decently chunky yarn, the gauge for this pattern was 20 stitches per 10 centimeters. Um, so like a pretty chunky cuff. And then it had me do a round of increases and then start the color work motif. And I got there and I was like, this is really, really wide. And I'll put a picture in here as well so you can see what I'm talking about. But the sleeve was extremely wide. So I looked at the stitch count for the sleeves and my gauge was fine, that was not the issue. And it ended up that you, the pattern is written so that the circumference of the sleeve is 16 inches, which like, I'm just gonna show you right now, that's 40 centimeters. Like this is how big the sleeve was gonna be on my lower arm. Like that is really, really, really big. And I was like, I don't want a sleeve that big. Like this is huge. I don't want that. I'm not gonna like it. I'd gotten past the first motif and I was like, so this is not what I want. Um, and so I was like, okay, I can do some math and like change the stitch counts. And I was like, that is a lot of work for me to go to for this sweater that I'm now kind of disenchanted with after like being unsure about the ribbing, being unsure about the motifs. I had also like was feeling kind of weird about the placement motifs of the placement of the motifs in the yoke. I was like, should I change the motif order? There was like, it was like three or four things about this pattern in a row that I was unsure about. And at that point I was like, I'm not going to make this sweater anymore. I have the book, but like, it's, I don't know. I just like, I'm not going to do this. So I was a little disappointed because like I expressly bought the yarn for that sweater. Um, so I was a little frustrated about that, but whatever. Like I just cut my losses. I'm like, this yarn is amazing. It's incredibly soft. It's incredibly cozy. I have 500 grams of the main color and hundred grams of the contrast. I'll just make something else with it. So I was thinking about what I could make and I kind of, I really like, um, the detail on sweaters where after the ribbing you do like a little bit of stockinette and it kind of rolls back on itself at the end of the ribbing. I have my anemone sweater which has been hibernating for months and I'll get back to eventually but it's a color work sweater but it has that motif on it um, and I have a like a ready to wear sweater that has that on it and I really like the 
Now I don't remember the name of the sweater, but I'll put it here, a picture of it here. This is a sweater by Tonya Heltzen or um, Strickekaffe, who I really like her designs and I really like the sweater. I was like, oh, I'll make this sweater. But the gauge on this sweater is 14 stitches per 10 centimeters and I don't have enough, like that's not gonna work with this yarn. So I think that what I've decided I'm gonna do is to knit a different pattern. I think I'm gonna end up using the chestnut sweater by Petite Knit, which is a 20 stitch per 10 centimeter gauge. Um, and it's an oversized design to have a turtleneck, like very cozy wintry sweater. And I'm just gonna add that little detail on the turtleneck, which I think I'm just gonna do a mock neck. And then on the arm cuffs, that little rolled hem detail um, to that sweater to kind of mimic the look of this sweater from Stick Cafe, but in a gauge that works for me. So I'm basically like doing some pattern mashup. Um, but that's, I think, what I'm gonna do with this yarn. And, but <laughs> another option is that I was on Instagram the other day and Sophie from the Knit Pearl Girl was talking about all the patterns she has coming out this year and she's releasing, or putting out a call to test and then releasing a pattern for the Farnham Sweater Chunky Edition, which is that she's put a sweater out and a t-shirt out of the Farnham design. It's a really pretty drop shoulder striped design um, with like a mock neck collar. And depending on the gauge of that sweater, I could be tempted to do that instead because I do have the contrasting white that I could use with this. Um, but I'm undecided if I wanna apply for, I might, mm, I'm not sure if I wanna apply for that test or knit that sweater or just go for the plain brown. I really like this brown color and I've already knit a striped sweater this year. So to be determined, I don't think I'm going to cast this on until I finish my zipper sweater. So yeah, I've had a few <laughs> unsuccessful attempts of knitting this month and some false starts, but overall it's been good. I have a finished object to show for it. I have fixed this. I have some progress on some other things. Um, and now I do have one more finished object that I will show you since we've come to the kind of the end of my current projects. Um, my last finished object for the month is very cute and very darling. I have made the coming home set, which is a little outfit from Petite Knit. Um, it's a cardigan with the buttons on the side the little pants and the little bonnet. And I made this for my baby because I'm pregnant and I'm going to be having a baby in February of next year. And so I made her this little outfit. <laughs> I love it. I think it's so darling. And I can't wait to bring my little daughter home in this outfit from the hospital. So yes, I'm having a baby. I'm really excited about it. I think that's part of the reason why well, not I think, I know. That's part of the reason why I've been more quiet on YouTube and on Instagram and just in general this past year. Um, I was really, really tired in my first trimester and just like did not have the energy to do anything, especially like not even knitting. So I have not been as prolific of a knitter this year as I have in past years, which is fine. I'm not upset about it at all, but that's kind of just some context for you all about why I've been a little bit quieter a little bit slower. Um, I've been growing a baby. It's a lot of, <laughs> it takes a lot of energy and it's a lot of work. Um, so yes, I'm really excited and have a lot of baby knits planned, which we could talk about later or in an upcoming video. But anyway, to the project, that's also fun. Um, I knit this whole little outfit. I've made the newborn size because I plan on using this as her hospital coming home outfit. Um, I made it in in John Arbin Textiles Knit by Numbers Merino DK, which I bought at Hill Country Weavers in Austin in June. Like, I just found out that I was pregnant at that when I went on that trip. Um, and I didn't know, obviously, if I was having a boy or a girl at that point, so I got the green because it's gender neutral and fits my color palette really nicely. And I love it. I think I can use it for this baby. And if I end up having future babies and their winter babies, I can use the same outfit for them as well. So that's really exciting. But yes, I used Knit My Numbers from John Arbin, Merino DK. It's a really beautiful color. It's like kind of a heather and it's non superwash, but it's extremely, extremely soft. So I'm not worried about it irritating her skin at all. Um, I don't, I'm not that worried about her, about having to wash it either. She'll be wearing it 
something underneath it anyway. Um, but yes, the, there's the little cardigan. And I knit all of these pieces up in the middle of this month, I would say. I went on a trip to visit a good friend of mine in Washington, D.C. And I knit the bonnet on the plane. And then I knit the cardigan. Did I knit the cardigan next? I think so. And then I knit the pants. But it, like, it was like all within a week. Um, they were super quick to knit up because they're so tiny. So yes, there's a little bonnet. That's darling. Um, this is a pattern from Petite Knit. It has these kind of like spirally decreases on the back. The sweater, which I love the buttons on the side. These are just some bone buttons that I bought at a creative reuse thrift store in California with my mom like a long time ago, but I think they work perfectly for this. And then the little pants, they're so cute. And I just sewed in the elastic today. They've been done for a little while, but I had to go pick up some elastic from the store. So yeah, just try not to make the elastic too tight. I think it'll be good. Um, I really enjoyed making this pattern. It's a petite knit pattern. It's very simple. It's very straightforward um, and easy to follow. But yeah, there's the cardigan, which is knit all flat. And then you do the little tiny arms. They're so short. Um, each arm took me like less than an hour. And so there's the little cardigan. The bonnet is a little wonky because I started knitting it and my tension was off so I had to rip it out and go up a needle size but I don't think it's noticeable enough and the little strings the little eye cord strings very cute and then the pants pants were super fast um, it's like half of the pants is the bum because you have to fit a diaper in there um, but the legs again were super super quick and easy to follow and they have short rows in the back to raise this up a little bit more and make some room for the diaper bum um, so yeah, the, I put the two little buttons on the front, same buttons as the, the cardigan, and it's now ready for her. So this is my first thing I've knit for the baby. I'm really excited. Um, I'm glad I'm having a February baby. It's perfect for me as a knitter. Although I feel like the timing is kind of weird, especially where I live, because it's gonna start getting warm in like, I don't know, May? So I'll have, like, I'm making her, this is, I've made this in a New York newborn size. I'll probably make one or two things in a one to three month size and then probably just hold because with babies, you never know how fast they're going to grow and what they're going to need. So I think for her fall wardrobe, I'll end up knitting that next summer when I have a better idea of how big she is and what she's going to need and like what size I should make for that like October, November, December month when she'll be like eight to 10 months, but maybe, she, I don't know if she's gonna be small or big. So I think I'll just knit a few things, clothing items for her in smaller sizes and then play it by ear from there. I don't know. Um, but yes, these are my little finished objects for my little baby. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll, I guess just keep talking about the baby and then I can go into acquisitions in a minute. But um, yes, I found out I was pregnant very early. So it feels like it's been a really long time, but I'm only just halfway through. I'm 20 weeks and a few days. I had my ultrasound this week and it went really well. Everything's good. She's measuring normally and growing normally and healthy and strong. So that's exciting. Um, I feel like really pretty fortunate in that I didn't have a lot of symptoms beyond just being really tired in the beginning. I wasn't really, I had a, there were a few days where I felt sick, but I wasn't sick every day all the time. And I haven't really had any weird like food aversions or cravings or like a lot of aches or pains or anything. I am now starting to have some heartburn, but beyond that, like I feel pretty lucky. I've had a fairly easy pregnancy so far, knock on wood, that it stays easy, but we'll see. I don't know. It's such a strange experience. <laughs> Um, but I do think it's very fun that I feel like there are a lot of people that I follow online that are pregnant right now and it's just kind of fun to know that we're all experiencing this weird thing together. So overall I'm very happy and excited and just feeling good and feeling happy and also feeling like I have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, you can expect a few little baby knits sprinkled through the next couple of months of videos and I guess forever. Um, but yeah, I have a couple things planned for her to make that I think I'll talk about in an upcoming video. I'll pro that'll probably be my next video this month um, is me talking about things I'm going to make for the baby. Um, but yeah, so I'll talk about acquisitions really quick. Some of them are baby related, but most of them aren't. I just got, actually, I think I just have one 
um, that is baby related. I got this Sun Garn Sunday in the color, I think it's called Rust. Um, I got three skeins of this from my local yarn store, which is Tea Cozy Yarn Shop here in Seattle. Um, and it was on sale and I had a gift card. So I bought three balls of this. My plan is to make, I think I wanna make one of the petite knit like onesies, either the Sunday suit or the Monday suit with this. Um, but I'm also like, I think it would be a nice cardigan. It's a good color in that it's like not, I feel like it would work across a lot of seasons. So maybe I'll do a cardigan. I'm not really sure. I have three skeins of it, which is 150 meters. Um, so we'll see. I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to make with it, but I know I'll use it for her. And that's really like the only acquisition I think I have this month. Um, so we could talk about plans and then a little life, a little more life stuff, and then I'll be done. So yes, plans. I have a plan to make a big, a blanket for the baby. Um, I have this DK weight yarn, which this is Filatura di Crossa Zara, which I bought at a thrift store. I have mm, 400 grams of it. And it was like a weird kind of yellowy green. And so I over dyed it with green and blue. And it's kind of this interesting marly, greeny, bluey color now. And I have 400 grams of it. And my plan is to use this yarn held with a, just a plain white DK weight yarn to make a blanket for the baby, but using the stitch pattern from the pressed flower shawl, which is by Amy Christopher's. Um, and this is not original. I mean, I came up with this idea myself, but other people have had the same idea. There are quite a few other people. If you go on the pressed flower shawl who have made it into a baby blanket. And I just think it would be really cute. And again, like this is kind of a more gentle neutral color. It's like a greeny blue. Um, but I think it would look really nice with like a crisp white for the flowers and then this on the background. Um, so that's my plan. I feel like I probably need to get started on that pretty soon because it's going to be big and it's going to take a while. So um, that's coming soon. The other couple things that I want to knit are a sweater for my husband who I think is asleep but maybe doesn't. So I'm going to talk a little quieter. Um, if you follow Laura Penrose from Penrose Knits, she just finished making a sweater for her husband for their seven year anniversary because the traditional gift is wool. Um, and it's also mine and my husband's seven year anniversary this year. And we're not really like, first of all, we don't really do anniversary gifts. And second of all, we don't really follow, since we don't really do gifts, we don't really follow the traditional gift thing. Our, our anniversary is like just barely a couple days after Christmas. And so it's like, a lot of gifts to have to get each other because my birthday is also in January. Like it's fine. It's just kind of a or something that we've established for her ourselves. But as a knitter, I kind of feel like <laughs> it'll be maybe, maybe like a joint Christmas anniversary gift that I'm finally going to make him a sweater. I've never made him a sweater before. I made him one pair of socks last year that he has not really worn. Um, but I have, I'm planning to make him the Korshaven sweater by Stricke Kefa, um, which is Tanya Hodja, I think is how you say her name. And Hodna, you, um, I don't know, Stricke Kefa, <laughs> she's lovely. Um, she had a baby last year. And I made myself the Korshaven sweater two and a half years ago, maybe 2020, 2021. Um, and he really like, he always comments on it. He says it's my favorite sweater that I, his favorite sweater that I've made. He calls it my like pie sweater cause it has this cool lattice effect on it. So I figured I would make him one and I'm going to use this. <laughs> this is not yarn. This is a sweater. Um, this is a secondhand sweater from Banana Republic. It's hundred percent wool and it's in this really dark charcoal gray color. So my plan is to unravel this and use it for that sweater for him. Um, I'm going to try and take a cue from Laura and get started on this pretty soon because it's a men's sweater and it's going to take a long time. Um, and just like seeing, she started her sweater in July for an, an October anniversary. So I think like I need to probably get started. Um, it's at a, like a relatively large gauge. I want to say it's like a 15 stitch gauge and it's a repetitive stitch pattern. It's not like a difficult sweater. I've made it before, so I know, but I think it's just going to take a while. So I need to get started. I just don't want him to know about it. So I'm going to have to find the opportunities to knit it while he's not around, which might be challenging, <laughs> but we'll see. So that's one of my plans. And my other plan is that I think I really want to make the new Ozetta 
Autumn Tales blanket shawl. And I think I'm gonna use this. This is Briggs and Little Country Roving, which is an unspun yarn, but it comes stranded up five strands together. Um, and I've used this yarn before, I really like it. Um, but I bought this when I was buying a bunch of other yarn from Briggs and Little and I bought it to meet the free shipping threshold, <laughs> knowing that I would use it for something. And I think this yarn is perfect for that pattern. It's like a big cozy scarf shawl. It's probably like this deep. So it's more of a scarf than a shawl, which I think would be nice, especially for me. I feel like I can wear it like wrapped around myself. And if I have the baby in a carrier, I can wrap it around both of us or use it as a scarf if we're going for a walk. Um, she's born in February, like late February, early March is when I'm expecting her to be here. So it will still be chilly here. Um, and it's a garter stitch shawl. I think it will be. Okay, friends. Um, my camera battery died and I cannot for the life of me find the charger. I've looked in all of the logical places and it's not there. So I'm going to wrap this up vlog style. Um, anyway, autumn tails blanket shawl really would like to make that. I love the braided edge. Um, the braided motif on the edge, which I think is done with a crochet hook, which is really cool. Um, very pretty, very cute. I might hold it with some brown mohair that I have, just like a leftover mohair that I have in my stash from my Amy slipover. Um, but I need to add a little bit of length to the Amy slipover, so I will probably do that first before I cast this on and decide if I have enough mohair to hold with it. So, yes, that's my plan for the blanket shawl. And then I have a couple more baby knits that I'm gonna make. And other than that, that's I think probably gonna carry me through the end of the year between the baby blanket and the sweater for James and the sweaters for me. I think that'll keep me busy for the next two and a half months. So yeah, um, that is it for that. The last thing I wanted to chat about was that I'm going away on Friday. Um, going to the UK for like a little baby moon, very kind of a spontaneous trip. There were really good flight deals and we're like, yeah, might as well. We're not going to be going to Europe again anytime soon with our little one. So, um, we're going to the UK. We're flying to London, spending just a couple days in London, like literally just two days. We're going to go across to Brussels for a couple of days. I used to live there when I was younger and James has never been. So I'm going to show him some of my favorite places and just a city that I really love. And that's really special to me. And then we're going to come back and spend some days in the Cotswolds, which I'm really excited about. It's not a part of England that I've spent much time in. Um, I've been to Bath. I think we may end up going to Bath one day, but I really love the British countryside. So I'm really excited to just spend some like kind of relaxing days there to take some time away from work, just to take some time for the two of us before the baby comes. So I'm really excited about that. Obviously going to be going to some yarn shops. I'll probably go to Loop London. Uh, not Loop, Beautiful Knitters is definitely, I think we're staying over in that area. Not quite Chelsea, a little bit north. Is it Kensington? I don't know. Um, pretty close to the VNA. We're staying over there for one of the nights in London. Um, maybe to Loop, maybe to Wild and Woolly. I really, really want to get some Manchalopis, which is from Wool Dreamers. And it is like half the price in the UK than it is in in the United States, you can get it here, but it's like $18 a cake, whereas in the UK, it's like eight pounds a cake, which is literally like half the cost. And it would honestly be less expensive for me to order it from the UK to me <laughs> than it would um, for me to buy it here. So I think they stock it at Wild and Woolly. I would, if we have time, I would like to go get some. I really want to make the Miles shirt jacket. Um, I just think it would be a really good piece for my wardrobe, like another piece of kind of outer wearing knitwear because we don't have super cold winters here and especially in the fall and spring, it's not terribly cold. You don't really need like a coat. Um, I think that would be a really good layering piece. I would really like to make it. And then what was the other thing? I really want to get some Kinross four ply, which I know that they have carried at Beautiful Knitters in the past, but it's not on their website anymore. So I'm like a little worried that they don't carry it anymore, but I'll go into the shop and see in person. Um, yes. And thank you to everyone who sent me some recommendations on Instagram. Uh, if you have any other recommendations for yarn stores in London or in the Cotswolds area, if we go to Bath, I'll go to Wool Bath. Um, or just like restaurants that you like or things to do. Um, this isn't going to be like a big sightseeing trip, I don't think. I think we may go to the V&A one day and the British Museum another day, and maybe to one or two museums in Brussels. But like generally, this is just kind of like a relaxing trip for us before the baby trip um so we're looking for good things to eat 
cute shops to look at. If you have any suggestions, I'm more I'm happy to take them um, and put them on my list. So yeah, that's coming up for me next week. So my next video might be a little delayed. I don't know if it may be like end up being the last week of October. This video is also a little later, later than I would normally post, but um, keep an eye out for that. I think my next video is going to be plans of things that I want to make for the baby. Um, and maybe just like a pattern roundup of baby patterns that I like. There are lots of really good free patterns for babies um, that I found. So if that's something you're interested in, I'm happy to do that. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on with me. <laughs> a lot but not a lot at the same time it's like having a baby is a lot but it's a long process to get there and she's still growing and has many more months to grow like four and a half more months so yeah it feels like I have a long time to prepare and also no time at all um but yeah I guess if you any of you have babies wh what did you knit for them like did are there things that you wouldn't do again like making things for them wise like did they grow out of things really fast were there fibers you would avoid I'll take any advice that you have. So yeah, that's it for me today. Sorry for the camera swap at the end. Hope you don't mind. Um, but yeah, it's been lovely chatting with you and catching up with you. This is a longer one for real, um, but there was a lot to chat about. <laughs> it was not my most successful month of knitting, but also I just like got to start on my baby's knitted wardrobe. So very exciting at the same time. Um, yeah, okay, I'm done rambling. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, my handle is the same as here on YouTube, APT Atelier. Um, I'm a little more active over there, like I'm occasionally posting a story. So if you want to see more from me, follow me there. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Participate in the Fall Fix Along and I will talk to you again very soon.